Living the good fat life with your host Karen and Sherry. They'll help everything align for your body, soul, and mind. The good fat life. Whether change comes slow or dramatically, the good fat life will help you sort things out organically. <laughs> that makes us laugh every time. <laughs> and I just told you, I, so I, I wake up, when, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I start humming this song. <laughs> I know. Because it makes me feel good. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's great, yeah. Right? It's great. It's good. Well... How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's a strange week for everybody, I think. It's, kind of ups and downs, right? It is. And the, the wind's blowing in. And this whenever this, this warm, kind of balmy wind comes in, it's like Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. Like, you just don't know what's blowing in. Yeah. The winds right. of change, yeah. right? The winds are changing, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> that's, that's right. cool. Um, and so to me, it's like there's always this element of uh, uh, expectation. Right, you I can like feel that. it in the air. That ultimately will be great. I like that. But it might be a little bumpy, yeah. right? right. Yeah. So Hope is in the air. Yeah. Hope is in the air. Like, so I feel it. So, yeah, so we are so excited today to um, welcome Amy Golem. Goler. Goler. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I say M? Um, well, because you're thinking McEwen, which is my maiden name. Is that? McEwen that, Goler. Okay. So. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And she has the Brighton Coffee and theater. Yeah, Brighton Coffee, Coffee House, House and Theater. Yeah. We always call it the B Cat. So yeah, it's yeah. the B Cat. Right. That is a mouthful. So the B Cat. In, um, so that sounds way Brighton. cooler, by the way, too. The B Cat. Yeah. Like yeah. Meet yeah. me at the B Cat. It <laughs> is. It is. And so we, um, I'll just first say um, we have our magazine, Good Fat Life magazine. And that's um, kind of where we started. And so we're just so excited to have added the podcast so that we get to have these amazing interviews with people like Amy. So. I know. How lucky are we? Thank so Amy, Thank you tell for us being a here, little, Amy. yeah, tell us a Thank little you. bit about yourself. Okay. Um, my, my husband and I are from California originally. I didn't know that. Where? <laughs> uh, California. I am originally from Altadena. Uh, so that's next to Pasadena in oh, the LA area. Oh, I love that. Pasadena's gorgeous. It's yeah. lovely. I haven't yeah. been, but it sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Uh -huh. um, my dad was on the Pasadena police force. And then we moved up to Davis, which is kind of between Sacramento and San Francisco, like that, um, where he became chief of police at UC Davis. I went to UC Davis. Uh, Marcus went to UC Davis. We didn't meet there. We met in um, Santa Barbara when I was going there for the acting program. And uh, I met him in a cafe there. He was running for Espresso Roma. And um, I was with my sister, who is gorgeous. <laughs> and... Uh, I spent my just like you. Oh well, thank you. Yeah. 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 It was definitely yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, you know, definitely didn't feel that way to me at the time. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, she and I are three years apart, and always guys would be like, "Hey, Amy, blah blah blah, your sister." You know what oh, I mean? Bummer. So yeah, so um, I met him. They knew each other from Davis, and when I first saw him, he's so beautiful. I am not kidding. She introduced him to me, and he reached his hand out across the counter to shake my hand and it was like the Looney Tunes thing where the whole room goes black yeah. except for the character in the middle. I am not kidding. I it was the it. weirdest thing. And um, when I graduated from Santa Barbara, I went back up to Davis because I was working for a scholarship to an acting school I'd been accepted to in London. And um, I walked into a cafe and he was running that one. So for two years, we didn't date after I met him. But then um, we were brought back together again and it was meant to be, right? Yep, we got married a year later. Oh. I married him when I was 22. Um, and we started Espresso Royale. Uh, we were working on it when we were planning the wedding. We took a two-week honeymoon and we left California. Um, needless to say, I didn't go to that acting school in London. And I'm so glad because the life I had with him was very rich. Um, we did Espresso Royale for 30 years. And um, so just, and that's a coffee Yep, a we coffee opened. Shop, like, um, yeah, it's a like, college. It's a it's a chain of college coffee houses. So okay. we were the first big coffee house in Ann Arbor. There wasn't one when we got there in eighty. I think we opened that one in eighty eight. Um, Marcus has opened over sixty cafes between Cafe Roma and Espresso Royale. Uh, we opened. I do not even know how many between the ones we sold, kept. Um, we opened six stores in Boston. We have six thriving stores in Illinois. There were six in Ann Arbor at one time, Athens, Georgia, 
Santa Cruz, California, um, wow. Santa Barbara. So, yeah. So we moved wow. 10 times in nine years. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And it was just wonderful. And we left Espresso Royale four years ago um, <clears throat> and started working on the BCAT. And this was his dream. I, you know, everyone always says, oh, this is your dream. And oddly, um, I'm a really content person. I'm just happy to do whatever we're doing. So it, I was all in, but this was really his baby. Um, you know, he, I've been directing plays at, at the high school. I'm a professional acting coach. I went to school for acting. I've been a professional actress. And uh, he was like, you know, you're, you're a great director, and we should have a theater downtown. There's no theater um, in Brighton. And so, so we put this together, and in all the stores that we have opened, we have never had the reception that we had in Brighton. And I don't know if it's a lot to do with it. It's a family business. My son, my daughter, my husband, and I all work there. And my kids are from Brighton. And we are so attached to this community. And, and you know, for people who moved as often as we did, we got a lot of tastes of... Different places. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like Boston. Yeah. Like so nice. Yeah, I found this, the same way a lot. here. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so I think there's something very special about Brighton. We always said it's like Mayberry, you know, um, sort of untouched by some of the ugliness that that I remember from California. <laughs> right, or other <laughs> But places. anyway, just, just, you know, harsh, harsh things. Um, it's really a sweet town, but I, but, but, but the reception that we received here was unbelievable. Um, lovely. You know, everything that Marcus wanted to try was embraced by the community. For instance, the yacht club, that was just the funniest thing. Everyone's like, there's no yacht club in Brighton. And we're like, well, actually, so he, so had, he started a yacht club. Yeah. yeah. He, he had these cat boats made. Um, cat boats are his favorite. Marcus loves to sail. He, he's an inventor. He does a lot of stuff. Wow. Um, so he had these little boats commissioned, radio control boats, and they're all over the mill pond last summer. We got permission from the city, and we had little speed boats too, and kids just come out and oh, rent fun. them for 15 minutes or an hour or whatever. And, um, and then we had, especially during COVID, uh-huh. when um, you couldn't take a boat out on the water because that's <laughs> contagious, whatever. <laughs> I just thought that was super weird. But anyway, um, we had actual yacht club um, older gentlemen and women come and say our yacht club is shut down can we come sail your boats sail your boats oh how yeah. fun and it was That's and they so really knew what they were doing yeah so we put a slalom course out for them and they it was really fun oh um, that's amazing yeah so so that's what we're doing I've done a, um, a lot of voiceover work that's that was kind of my bread and butter for a long time when professional theater just was too time consuming and you especially mean, with a family I mean yeah. it's, it's nights and weekends it is and yeah. like I did that already. I'm not mm-hmm. super interested in doing that anymore. Um, I'm more interested in my kids. Yeah. Um, and being home with my husband, he was really patient. You know, all the nights I was away in rehearsal, he didn't care. You know, he just wanted to see the show. So, um, so you haven't heard Karen. You haven't heard Amy sing. Oh, yours She's an amazing. Sweet. Was <laughs> oh, no, was no, no not at all. Time. I'm not gonna say sing something yeah, for us. I'm not gonna put you on the side. <laughs> no, well, we're, we're choir buddies. Yeah, right. I well, know that. that. Yeah, met. she told me. Yeah, sisters that's right. in song. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but Sounds yeah. like you're both a Renaissance people. Yeah. You and yeah. Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Sherry yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, and then I did. Um, you know, I taught exercise for 25 years. I was a personal trainer for 10 years, um, which is which is really fun. So I have a lot of opinions about um. The good fat life, you know, <laughs> coming out of that industry, I can tell you. Right. Um, so, um, but let's talk about that a little bit. So, because um, what, what one of the things I'm loving so much about your story, it's about having a dream, having a vision, and then yeah. making it happen. Yes. Right? And, yes. And so that is, I mean, that's, th- those are the stories that we all want to hear. Yeah. Because everybody has dreams. Yeah. And we, it's, it's so, um inspiring right yeah when you hear that somebody did it as and and not that you're an ordinary person I don't mean that in no any but way, we but are aren't we we're all ordinary we're all and ordinary. extraordinary yes. at the same time exactly Perfect you know like we're perfect way to say it. yeah like we're all given every person is given the same 24 hours in each day and you know and mm-hmm. I think every person comes with this amazing the fact that each person is alive yeah. statistically you yeah. know it's like one in in 10 billion chances that you are actually here yeah mm-hmm. and that to me s- signifies that there's a purpose mm-hmm. I totally right. agree it's significant um at at um 
And so, so my husband just passed away a few weeks ago. And when we had a memorial for him at the BCAT, we had an open mic, which was just perfect. My son and my daughter both spoke to what you're saying. And I, I, it was really beautiful. My son said of my husband, he was a man of action. If he had an idea, he did it. There was no, he did not think that it wouldn't work out. He was always sure that it it would would work out. And you know, honestly, every religion agrees on this one point. As a man thinks, so is he. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the, the thought life is all. If I tell myself, well, that's going to be hard. I can't really do that. It depresses my emotions and it depresses my ability to feel energy towards that project. But if I tell myself, I can totally do that. That's going to be fun. I even in just the example that I'm giving right. you here, I feel completely different. And it doesn't matter if you're wrong or you're right. Um, you feel different. You will have more energy going forward. You have a better chance. Your moment is better. And if we are only promised today, isn't it important that this moment is better? Um, you know what? What is that? If you say you can or you say you can't, either way, you're right. 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 Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. I was going to so. ask you: Have you had any? It sounds like you've really had very little failures, or if you did have a failure, you saw oh. it as just like oh, we've had them. Oh, it sounds like you. How did you handle those in a um, positive, oh. healthy way? Oh, on. let me tell you. So, <laughs> so we um, we've had a few. Um, we. Uh, Right in our heyday in, in Ann Arbor at the Espresso Royale, my, my husband was like, let's open a, a pizza by the slice shop. So we did. We did hire the wrong manager, however. Um, it was going really well. Um, we were busy. We were successful. And the pizza was amazing. And my kids barely remember this because when you're so little, <laughs> running yeah. around with little balls of dough. But, but <laughs> um, you know, there's a trust issue. You really have to hire the right people. And we didn't. And um, one of the things about Marcus is that he... Um, doesn't like confrontation and he will paired with that however he will give everybody every last chance to redeem themselves he believes that everyone given the right amount of support and love can ultimately come around and be them best selves so I have remarkable stories about about that but um in this situation it was not true anyway we had to close the store <laughs> sometimes yeah you can't. we had to close the store and we still had a significant amount of rent left i remember driving to the gas station pulling out every credit card i have just to see which one calling which one had room to get gas um but you know it didn't work and if you're afraid of failure mm-hmm. sometimes you have to come face to face with it to understand that it does not kill you you just learn some significant right. lessons. Mm-hmm. Money can be made and lost mm-hmm. and made again. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that sucked. But, you know, we're still paying for it, literally. Wow. Um, but it's whatever. You know, we won't do that again. And we were very careful. We were very careful going forward with with partners. And and, and my husband learned that you, you really have to, you really do have to say stuff that is unpleasant sometimes. Just frame it well. Um, and that was, that. you know, he just... That was hard for him. So, and then um, our house flooded in two thousand four. Uh, it was up to here in the living room. Oh no! Right, um, and that was that set us back uh, so much money because flood insurance is really different from um, from fire. Mm-hmm. And you know, we had two small kids, and we had a great time. It was extremely stressful. Um, again, we had just had the failed pizza business. So on top of that, we were oh, then at 200000 yeah. in the hole with the house. Um, but we we had a party. We we moved the wall back so half the house was flooded. Uh-huh. We let the kids roller skate in the water. We had beach balls. We took the sailboat out and had, you know, fishing fishing expeditions with the kids. And we lived in – our neighbors were – amazing they let us live in the cottage next door and and there were nights when we walked into the house once Marcus started to rebuild it and we would feel like we'll never be able to pay for this this will never be a house and those thoughts throw you in the pit Mm -hmm. and we just learned you know you have to walk in and say we are going to be able to pay for this and this is going to be the house that we've always wanted which it is now Mm -hmm. and we're still paying for it but yeah we'll get there but you know what i mean it's all it's all what you tell yourself it's all an attitude and intention and you're right you have to have your thoughts straight to get through these things it's 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 everything the thought life is all it really really is you know it's in every religion 
Mm-hmm. You know, so there must be a heck of an element Something of truth to that. Well, yeah. and what I, what I tell my husband, he'll go, you're just being positive or something. And I said, well, I get to choose, right? And if it makes me feel better, who cares? Exactly. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, if, if it's all mumbo, whatever. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but if I feel better, then it's a good thing. Well, if you feel better, you can do better. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know? and, and, and your circumstances are what they are. Right. right. It's not, you know, there's your circumstances and then there's your truth, right? Right. right. So, so, for instance, yes, my husband is gone. My husband of 34 years, we would be celebrating our 34th wedding anniversary in, in, in about 10 days. And I am devastated. And when I look at the empty spaces where I expect him to be, I can say to myself, I want him back. I can say, I'll never get through this. And look at what's happening to me. Right. Yeah. I can look at those spaces and say, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm so grateful that I had a marriage that some people spend their lives looking for and never have. We were, we were so compatible. Neither of us perfect, but we were perfect for each other. Family life, so lovely. I'm so grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Now look at me. Like my body position has changed. I feel better. Yeah. So, 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 so naysayers will say, and I, and I get them, you know, well, you're not, you're not being truthful about your circumstances. My truth is higher than my circumstances. Mm-hmm. That's a that's, great way that's to put beautiful. it. That's yeah. a beautiful yeah. way to put it. I mean, right? I have a question for you. Yeah. How, how, how are you finding comfort now? Because I realize when people that pass away young in my life, they had such a way about them that you knew what they loved. You saw them sort of everywhere. Like there seems like people that pass away younger, you, it's like you know you knew their favorite color. Everybody knew a lot about them that were really cool things you wouldn't normally know about people. And so, yeah. how does that comfort you during the day? Like um, what, what, how, what are, how are you finding comfort? You know, it's really interesting. Um, again, I stay away from thoughts that will. I there there's a pit of grief. I, I have some experience with this. My best friend in high school was murdered by a serial killer. And, I, and that, it took me 10 years to climb out of that. Um, 10 years, okay? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 10 years. Like, I couldn't go running by myself. I still don't want to camp because that's where they were. Um, so, so luckily, I know what that pit looks like, and, I, and it's like climbing out of a mud hole. Um, so I comfort myself by framing my grief in gratitude. Um, there's power there, and it keeps me away from the edge of that pit. It's not to say that I am not, I don't like being uh, in the house by myself uh, at night because mm-hmm. we would always have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I miss that. But, but I, t- you know, I talk to him. I feel him in the house. I can feel his arms around me right now. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like the fabric of the air has changed. Um, with my friend Ellen, it was very different. Her circumstances were very different. And I was terrified and devastated. I, I developed an eating disorder. It was 10 years um, of hell. And I, I, was ter- I was living in fear. I could not go running by myself. I could, you know, nothing. And Marcus helped me move through that. Move through that. So now, when I'm uncomfortable being by myself, I reframe it. I feel him in the house. I go and I sit on the spot where he sat. And I tell him I love him and I miss him. But I feel that he is here. When I was working out this morning, I could see him just laughing. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, so, so th- it's, yeah. I'm not it's devastated. Really ba- it, 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 right. not to, put, to put it in a simple way, it's like his body's just gone and you still feel his energy. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I don't it's feel. Dro- he just dropped his yeah. body kind of thing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, my son says the same. It's really interesting because here we are rattling around in the house together, you know. Um, he has said he dreamed about him. And he was just there with us, everything that we were doing, and just smiling, just happy. That's like, a visitation. Exactly, yeah. just mm-hmm. happy. Um, I had asked God not to tease me like that. When Ellen was killed, there were two weeks where she came to me every night and sat on my bed. She's my neighbor. We were so oh, close. Um, and she would hold my hand and say, how are you doing? And we would, then I'd wake up and be devastated because I was fooled mm-hmm. in the dream mm-hmm. into thinking she was here. And so now... I just don't want that, you know. I don't want the grief to wash over me anew as if I didn't know it had happened. So I'm lucky that 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 didn't. Well, and it's interesting. It's always interesting how life things happen, right? 
Yeah. So mm-hmm. things happen and they seem kind of random. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, no. yes, yeah. <laughs> and yet, I mean, it just everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it comes back and you go, oh, yeah. that prepared me or that helped exactly. me. Exactly. Because I was exactly. going to say how devastating. To be, exactly. Devastating. To be to this, to this point. Mm-hmm. And um, I like one of the things, you know, with creativity, it's you Creativity by nature is you're creating something that's never been created before. So there's going to be wins and losses, yeah, right? Exactly. But, but all of it's part of the process. Exactly. Because, you know? because it's not possible to create something 100% the first time. Right. Yeah. And the, all of those things are what make that, that process so rich and interesting and, um, and it all know, starts and with life. a thought. It all, all starts, starts with everything here. Everything. And, and yeah. Karen and I have been talking a lot about, and you mentioned it like with the magazine and, and community. Mm-hmm. It's like creating this community that it's okay, you know, go be uncomfortable with, go do your uncomfortable thing because you're compelled to do it. And there's this whole community that's got Supporting your back you. to be there, you yeah. know, yeah. To, to support you through. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell us a little, you know, like, some of the things that you're doing at the Bee Cat that I, I didn't know about the yacht. Oh, <laughs> I know, so that's club. hysterical. So Do people dress yacht, up? And we stuff? have we have yacht club t-shirts and hats. <laughs> Um, I'm going to get like Madrid plaid <laughs> pants. I'm going to do the oh, whole yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. And, and then um, Marcus had um, sailor hats and captain's hats, and the kids could buy those and wear them. Um, it was so fun. <laughs> Just fun. Why not yeah. play? I yeah. mean, we're all, you know, you ask somebody my age, you ask somebody in their 70s, and they will tell you, aside from some aches and creaks, we all still feel like we're 16. You know, yeah. the, the yeah. playfulness, hopefully, does not, life does not knock it out of you. Um, everyone should play. Playing is fun. Yeah. So, so well, COVID did an interesting thing for us, um, speaking of what we are and are not doing. Um, <clears throat> so we usually run open mics. We do comedy showcases, stand-up comedy. We like to see people who... I. So having been in professional theater, right, my, my idea with the theater was to provide a platform for the people who don't always get seen, who never get seen, because the people who always get seen always get seen, right? Okay. So even with musicians, the, one who, the ones who play everywhere, play everywhere, let's see somebody who hasn't made that jump yet. Let's get, For whatever reason. For whatever I reason. Mean, right. Sometimes you just can't get in. Um, maybe your demo tape wasn't good enough or, or you don't have the money to make one. So... so so theatrically um, and with the music, that's always my goal. Um, and then Marcus always wanted to do really interesting stuff. Like we did uh, Salinger's Franny and Zoe uh, mm-hmm. two summers ago. Um, and we couldn't charge for it because you can't get the rights to oh, it. Yeah, okay. so, so we just did donations. But they were two fabulous plays. We did Franny, and then everyone was like, are you going to do Zoe? Right. And I was like... <laughs> No, okay. So we did, you know, it was really fun. You can't do one without yeah, the other. Yeah, and so, and then my friend Lynn Wildy with her company, she brings in bigger productions. Um, and then we do, you know, a lot of live music. The open mics are really, really fun. Um, so so stuff like that. But with COVID, so, so again, just going back to what you said about things being meant, um, we, we never closed our doors. We were always open, but it was just kind of the four of us working really hard, Marcus, me, my son, and his girlfriend, <laughs> um, just round the clock. But we closed early, so for a year, my husband and I, who I miss desperately now, had all of our evenings off together. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. And we would say to each other, because we are both homebodies, um, my husband is an excellent cook, and... Um, he would always make something amazing and joke that we would starve were he not here. <laughs> and luckily, thanks to my sisters in song, I am not starving because they bring us two meals a week. But anyway, um, so so we, we would say to each other, this is so great. Even with reduced income and all the issues that we have, we have all of our nights off together. And little did we know this would be the last year. And, if, and, and the events are very stressful. Like I open, so I'm up at five. Sometimes I don't get out of there till with the old schedule, two or three o'clock, and then to have to come back and run a rehearsal or run an event was exhausting. And it honestly was a bit much for me. So I, I'm going to farm some of that out now, delegate it. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a schedule that we could not maintain for much longer because okay. we're not 25 anymore. Um, but 
but we had that year, that just blessed year. Um, and you know, my son will say, you know, he, he did, uh, he was in the college of engineering at Michigan for two years. He didn't really like it cause he's creative. He's an artist. He did the mural on our back wall. Wow. Oh, he does okay. all of our chalkboards. Oh, wow. He did our logo, Very all talented. of our t-shirts. Um, running lab has commissioned him to do their mural on their building and tribute as well has asked him. So, I mean, he's, he's an artist. Wow. Um, and he was like, I, he was so frustrated with himself. Like, why can't I get up and get going and go do something else? You know, he was running the store with us. And then of course, in this last month, he's come to realize he's like, I was exactly where I was supposed to be this whole time. Cause he was with us. He was learning from Marcus and working side by side with him. So are we always exactly where we're supposed to be? Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Know. Right. Right. So, so we'll, we'll start again with some of that stuff, but I, I'm going to do a lot less of it. Um, I don't think we need it um, as much as we thought we did. I don't like kicking people out of the store for theatrical productions when they're there. So I want to scale that back and just do a couple really special ones a year. But uh, the live music, the stand-up showcases, the open mics, just whoever wants to perform, all I have to see is, all I have to see <laughs> is a live tape. So a live performance. Can you ask, tell people where to send yeah, that? Send yeah, send it to us on Facebook Messenger, Brighton Coffee House and Theater, our, our Facebook page. Send it to me on Messenger. Um, and I, I really, again, like we've had, um, like, um, my mind is going blank, but, you know, people who teach lessons, bringing their students and doing those kinds of, okay. you know, I'm, I'm, there is no age range. If you are 10 years old and you are a prodigy and you want to come and play the piano for an hour, Let's do it. Um, I'm I'm up for anything as long as it's good. So I so I need a live <laughs> video, no studio video. <laughs> okay. Live video. Yeah, Facebook okay. Messenger. So, okay. So we've been um, the choir had some yes, um, yes, yes. like <laughs> open mics at the Livingston us, the Livingston. Tell us about your choir. Chorales, yeah, right? baby. So there's the women's chorus and the um, mixed chorale, men and women, and then the youth choir. Yeah. And uh, the women's chorus. That's because that's what I'm in with. That's, that's where I met Amy. Yes. Yeah. Um, I am a choir voice, just to be sure. <laughs> she is a soloist. <laughs> was. So, um, but, but anyways, but it was so much fun, so <gasps> stinking fun to just be there and people would come up and they'd sing and they'd do this. You just felt like alive. I mean, it's fun. It's, you've, you're right. It's, it's fun. fun. There's Why an not? aliveness. There's a sense of community. It's creation, it's movement, creation, life, and, yeah. and the coffee's great. And it's joy. It's yeah, joy. it's it's. I, I I one of my favorite statistics to quote lately is well, that it. <laughs> is it the four a four year old laughs four hundred times a day, four hundred times a day, right? And my four year old <laughs> grandson's coming Ooh, tomorrow, so I'm so, so excited. So I'm gonna be laughing. <laughs> the average adult laughs. It takes them two and a half months. To laugh four hundred times, oh, and yeah. there's just something not right about that, no, right? No. no. So, so like Karen and I, we really have with the magazine, we really are on a mission to play. Well, mm -hmm. you got it. You got to do it. You mm -hmm. got to do it. I I went for a run this morning, and I played uh, a lot of Marcus's and my favorite songs. And when I came back, I hula hooped for six minutes. Oh, because <laughs> I want to play. You should see it. Like on. On his last day on the planet, he went and picked up a piece of equipment for me that I had bought on Facebook Marketplace, a climber. Uh -huh. um, on my climber is my jump rope and my hula hoop. And my living room has all this playground equipment is basically what it looks like. It is an adult playground. I have a lateral slide board. I have an elliptical. I've got my jump rope. My <laughs> How fun. Gorgeous, gorgeous view. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so, just all my plants. All your plants. Yeah. yeah. That's and a great... Yes, yeah. That's... So, so I, you said something about um, being a personal trainer yeah. and, your, and your journey with fat. Yes, I have a lot so, to say about this um, because I, I agree with almost everyone on, this, on every element of this topic. So, so again, um, when, my, when, my, when my girlfriend was murdered, um, one of the things that happened was that I developed an eating disorder. And I... I uh, that was tough. And then what I noticed was that God trotted through my life as a trainer, so many young girls with eating disorders out of, after I'd climbed out of it. And it's always something else. It's never just body image. 
it's mm-hmm. always something else, um, more, something more. Right. Um, for me, it was a way to pretend to control something when the rest of my life was spinning out of control. Um, and, and, and in the future, I would still, when stress would hit, be like, getting fat, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's, so it's a habit, right? Um, and for me, it really had very little to do with food and all of that. I just, uh, you know, I was anorexic for a while. And then when I, I was under 100 pounds, running 13, 15 miles a day, eating a handful of grapes, something like that, you know. And then in, in one summer, my sister, one of my sisters rescued me and took me up to her boyfriend's place in Lake Tahoe, and they fed me. I gained 25 pounds in two weeks and another 25 in the next two months. So I left my freshman year of college under 100 pounds and came back at about 150. Now, if that doesn't continue an eating disorder, I don't know what will, right? Right. And then every summer I'd get cast in summer stock and they'd say, you've got to drop 25 pounds. I only need one way to do it. So it was a... Yeah, it's uh, really yeah. hard for people to understand how to help that um, s- disease and sickness. It's yeah, hard. Right. It's hard. It's hard. It, and... And it doesn't always, you can't always, Mm -hmm. and that's the sad truth. And also, I think it's important for people to understand that men suffer the same, Mm -hmm. that there are... It's more shameful, I think, as well. It's, it, yeah, yeah, because they don't talk about it. But the pressure on men to be ripped and be swole is the same. The the cultural, the cultural pressure, even though I would say our society still says a woman is what she looks like and a man is what, a man is what he does, Mm -hmm. um, there is more and more pressure, especially with social media, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all the selfies Mm -hmm. to, to look good. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that sucks, right? And it's very hard for people. Um, and I think, I think an unhealthy focus on that is, is just a nail in the coffin for your, for your spiritual health, right? Um, so you have to eat, you have to focus on being healthy, eat right, get exercise. Having said that, though, I will say that it's important. We, we all feel better when we look the way we want to. We all feel better when our clothes fit. And I'm not talking about, you know, somebody my age and, and my willingness to put effort in being a size zero again. I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be 15% body fat again. I'm not, I'm not competing in a bodybuilding competition. But... I do feel better when I know I'm healthy and Mm -hmm. I can wear everything in my closet. And I don't, I don't think it's proper or good to, to shame people out of that desire either. So, so it's, I think it's a very fine line, a very fine line. I think we have to be real careful uh, about the messages that we give people. You are more than what you look like. You are you from the inside out. You are beautiful from the inside out. It's still important to feel beautiful from the outside in. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants that. Mm-hmm. And that's not a terrible thing. You know, it's not. Right. Um, but, but, but what you said, though, is I think that's the part that's the most important is inside out. Inside out. Mm-hmm. And then outside in. Exactly. And it because has you to can't go in get that order. Yeah. Right. You can't right. get the outside in. Right. In a way that is healthy and beautiful for you mm-hmm. if the inside right. is not okay. Yeah. Is not okay. Right. Yeah. Because then it's an unhealthy um, emphasis on something that will not actually help you. Mm-hmm. It will not help you. You are still miserable. You are still hurting. It's like being a dry alcoholic basically or dry drunk. Kind of thing. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. Bingo. So, so I've seen a lot in the industry, a lot, you know, I used to have, you know, like I had 45 clients when I was living in Boston and I trained all day, men and women, mostly women. Um, and I heard and saw a lot. And if I was doing my job well, I should have been charging 200 an hour because it was always digging deep. Why do you treat yourself this way? Why do you say those things to yourself? Um, and it's exhausting, which is why I, I will never, do that again. I love to give free advice, but that's it. <laughs> no, yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, let's, let's move together, go on walks, go on runs, yeah. find a buddy and exercise is important. It's, it's necessary. If you want to be fit and you have an aesthetic goal for yourself, it's important to understand that weightlifting is crucial. You know, yeah. what I find interesting um, about your story is that you said um, when you're 
when your friend died, your best friend died, you, you started with the um, eating disorder. And I remember when my dad passed away, I kept circling around to, it was because I was too fat somehow. And it's what like, the hell? where the hell did that even come I know. from? But somehow it made sense. And it really had nothing to do, but somehow the socialization of eating, it's like you're social, you want to shut off more social socialization somehow or something. There's something to that. So I can relate to that. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Super, super weird. Yeah, um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's super, super weird. But I, but I, we got to be really careful with our kids, what we say to them, our boys and our girls, you know, um, it's, it's, it's really important to, we have to model self-care yeah, right? yeah. that's yeah. yeah that's um that's a big uh um i don't know priority mm -hmm. for us at good fat life yeah is about modeling self-care yeah and it's self-care you know we had this discussion yesterday it's not just self-care so that we can put our mask on on the airplane and yeah. help others it's so that we we can put our mask on on the airplane and show others to put their own mask on if everybody yeah. takes care because of themselves. If everybody yeah. can take care of themselves, then you can show up whole. Well, yeah, we, you, you show up whole. Yeah, and think of what's possible. Well, exactly. And Anything's you, possible. Yeah, and you cannot give what you do not have. You know right. what I mean? So you really have to. Um, <clears throat> you really have to find a way to to embrace who you are <clears throat> and think about what you can give. You know. Um, there are people in life who do big things, really big things. There's Mother Teresa, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's Gandhi, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> but a lot of the really important work um, gets done in the five minutes you might have with someone you don't even know. You never know what you're putting on the wheel, mm -hmm. and you never know whose life you're saving just with one interaction, one interaction. And that's why I love working counter. I love it. I can't wait to to experience each person that comes in and be like, hey, how are you doing? You know, what's up? And, um, you know, I feel like a professional lunch lady. It's, but, you know, what, but what you're saying is something that was really interesting. I was listening to on NPR, and they were talking about how um, just life, life before COVID, right? Yeah. You go through your day, and you would have dozens of those transactions yeah. often in a day. Yeah. You open the door. Mm -hmm. You buy something you whatever you did and they're not people that you would that you know you yeah. wouldn't say hey you know hey mr grocery store person yeah. mm -hmm. um you know how's your life going yeah yeah but yet those are the little um encounters that provide the richness and the community mm -hmm. in our life and then when COVID hit suddenly we don't have those anymore exactly and, and it exactly. was and it was fascinating to think about because it's so true. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. little brief encounters add so much to the quality of our day. They do, and we, um, so again, we didn't close, right? We stayed open. So, <clears throat> so what we noticed was every customer who came in um, really needed that interaction, and it was so good for us as well. Um, we'd be, you know, my son and my husband would be like sitting there playing chess because it was just so slow or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people would come in and they'd order sandwiches and say, you know, can you can you take a while to make those? And I'm like, I could take a half hour to make those if you need to. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they would talk with Marcus or with my son or visit. And they had, you know, it was also a really ugly uh, political climate, right? Oh, right. During that right. time. And people all, you know, we heard a lot of different opinions and um, wanted to really listen and care and love each of our sweet, sweet customers that came in just dying for some interaction. You know, they're working from home and they're, you know. Right, right. Karen, Karen <laughs> was, she got gas. I remember mm. that recently, oh. and and the guy said to her, "I'm really smiling behind this mask." Exactly. Yeah. Right? And before I left, he pulled it down. He's like, "Hey," and he gave me a big smile. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. Yeah. So those little things. Well, yeah. So so tell us again where people, if they're interested in learning more about the Beat Cat, oh, yeah. how they get a hold of you. Yeah. Um, and uh, we are having our website. Um, Mixer Media is is do redoing our website for us. So that's um, Brighton Coffee House is. Dot com. Um, but 
the the Facebook page, the Brighton Coffee House Facebook page, um, the Messenger is the best way to get a hold of me. We do have an email, but it only my husband has access to it, and I haven't quite oh got figured that out. I haven't gotten it sent to me yet, and that's like community at brightoncoffeehouse.com, and I don't use that, so don't use that. Um, <laughs> We're good um, at that. But yeah, the the Facebook Messenger is the way. I I. I do not answer my phone. I answered it this morning because I thought it might be you. Um, but it, usually I'm on counter, and um, I, I will I will accept a text. So if you have my number and I'm not giving it out, um, text me. Do not call me because I, I won't pick it up. Um, but I'd love to see. I, I will respond okay. to a text. But it's Facebook Messenger. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at Brighton Coffee House. At Brighton Coffee House. Okay. Um, Brighton Coffee House and Theater. And my son, we're starting up art shows again. So... If you are an artist and you want to show your art in our store, that's always been something that we we started out doing it and we kind of fell off during COVID because no one of was course, coming in, right? right? Yeah. Um. So so we want to do that. Um. If you have a play that you want to do a read through of an original script, you want to do a, a read through and a talk back, we'll do it. If you want to do a production of it, I'll direct it. Um. Anything and everything. We we can't do a lot because I'm not sure about what the. Uh, Occupancy rules are for events. I know that we are now allowed to be at 50% capacity, which means that actually, okay, so this is funny. We're zoned for the theater, so our occupancy is like 96. But that's when we pull every table out, and it's it's stage to wall chairs. Okay. So when we have all the tables and chairs out, we're at 50%. So we're always at fifty percent. So that's easy for us. That was mm-hmm. lucky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know for for events what what the occupancy rules are yet. Okay. All right. And then also, um, just want to remind people. I'm not sure where to look. I, <laughs> yeah, know. I know. Remind people that um, if you'd like to subscribe to the magazine, just click on the QR code or go to um, goodfatlife.com. And um, subscribe. We have the digital copy, and then we have got this beautiful hard copy. And um, yeah, yeah. So Amy, we like to ask our guests oh, sure. um, to what somebody sitting right where they are right now. They don't have to buy anything. They don't have to leave their house to get it. What something advice you could give them, um, possibly in grief, since you're going through that. If they're feeling grief right now, what is something something you could leave with them? Oh yeah. Uh, well, if you are experiencing loss, I will tell you from my heart, I'm sorry, because <laughs> it's really hard. Um, but I will say that my son and my daughter and I have all learned this really important lesson. And again, I've said it once, but to to reframe for yourself um, your grief in terms of gratitude. And I know that sounds so cliche right now because it's something that everybody says, but I'm, I'm telling you, it works. Yeah. yeah, like I could, again, I can indulge myself in thoughts like, I want him back. I We had a future plan together. We had, and I never, I never thought I'd find myself in this situation, right? But I'm so grateful that I had 34 years, well, plus, if you count when we were dating, um, years with a man who was perfect for me, who we had so much fun together. We were very silly. Um, you know, I was editing his novel right now. Just, he left me with so much, and he left me with a B-cat. Um, and my kids say the same thing. For them, they reframe their their grief in terms of gratitude for, for the incredible life that we all shared together. So I would say, try to think of it in those terms. It does not change your loss. It does not take away uh, the pain, because you kind of want that. You kind of want to feel that bittersweet uh, pain, but you also need to move forward. You need to move your ball forward. And it's like taking a Motrin for a headache. The headache is still there, but you're slightly more comfortable. And the thing about grief is it's really uncomfortable. You just don't want to feel bad anymore. Um, you know, you don't. I don't want to find myself making lattes and notice that my face is soaked with tears and I didn't even know it was happening. Um, but, but... But you have to go through it, and the only way out is through. But it does help to reframe it in gratitude and think about what you had. Now, if you have lost somebody that you were at odds with, that is a much more complicated experience, and you might have regrets, okay? Listen to me. Let it go. Let it go. Forgive yourself. They don't care. If there's something that, that you did that you regret, something you said, 
They don't care anymore. They're happy. Let it go. Do yourself a favor and forgive yourself. If they did something to you, do yourself a favor and forgive them. Because unforgiveness is like swallowing poison. You're hoping it's going to affect somebody else. You know what I mean? It only wrecks your own experience. So let some things go. Take care of yourself. And reframe it in gratitude. It helps. Thank you. And we're so thankful yeah. that you came today. It feels really so, fun. so yeah. much gratitude. And Come and we, get some coffee. Yeah. 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 Some Thank coffee. you for being so brave and vulnerable oh, today thanks. and being here today. Oh, Thank thanks. you so much. And honest thanks for and, having me. And for the fun. I'm so yeah. excited about I know. I'm you excited know. about the VCAT. Me too. Yeah. I just want to get you guys back in there singing. Yeah. yeah. I know. Fun. I know. Well, it's coming, right? Oh, wait. It's can coming. I say one more thing? Of course. So my husband knows how to make those boats go, and I don't. So, So if anyone wants to have a hand in the yacht club, and knows how to make those little radio control engines work, we really need help with that. My son doesn't know. I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> Come in and help me, please. Come help Amy, please. Yeah, so, I don't know how to make those boats go. So on that happy moment, thank you so much to Amy. Thank you, Amy. Thank you yeah, yeah, so for fun. being here and to hmm. Karen and to Sherry. Me. It's a good yes, fat life, isn't to, it? And yes. a good fat life. Yeah. And uh, have a great week. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys.